Hey guys, how are you doing? Welcome back. So, I have been in the works and I've been developing this sonar guided torpedo right here. And uh, I've situated my boat from the conquest mode video over there. And we're going to be trying to sync it with this. So what we've got is a warhead at the front, a couple of sonars and the propellers and the fin rudders at the back there to... Uh, we'll guide it and yeah, let's see how it goes. So we press the launch button, we'll drop into the water and it's got a set depth of minus two so you'll never even see it coming. It's going to sit at that depth and in a minute here we should see an explosion right there. Oh my god that thing. <laughs> I did not expect it to do that much damage to be honest but uh, yeah target destroyed. Oh my. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to send it off once more for you, and this time I'll follow it with the no-clip camera. So here we go. I'm going to launch it, and it will initially drop down, but you can see it's already changed its trajectory there, and that is now leveled out at the minus two, like I said before. It's really fast, and once it connects, it's going to trigger the warhead on there and explode, and it will keep going off to its next victim, I guess. The warhead only triggers once, but uh, it will it'll keep going. But uh, yeah, not as much devastation that time, but this boat will certainly go down. That is a lot of damage to the underside of a boat hull. So the idea is, is that it will follow at that 2 meter depth underwater. You can change that, that is configurable in the microcontroller. But once it gets into a set range, the radar that governs the vertical motion will kick in and it will track and it will literally rise up and smack into the target which uh, I think is pretty cool so let's go through how I did this and hopefully you can get some ideas for your torpedoes as well so I'm here in the workbench and let's just take a look real quick at what we've got here so we've obviously got the warhead up the front that's just a medium warhead body you could put the head on there but I wanted the flatter nose cone on there we've then got the two sonars right here and these are just using the FOV and elevation angle. If you go back and you watch my first radar tutorial, I know they're not the same, but sonars didn't get the update that the radars did. So they work in pretty much the same way, uh, just for underwater. And the concepts that I've used here are quite similar. So I recommend you check out that video. But here's the main microcontroller. As you can see, it just slots in. This torpedo is a 3 by 3 you could make this a one by one, though I suspect you'll have to make this microcontroller super long and your radars will be sticking out uh, of the main body, but uh, that's up to you. We've got two motors here and these are going to be powering our 9 to 5 gear ratio and so our propeller is going to be spinning quite fast and as you can see it did go quite fast which is a cool feature of this particular torpedo. We've also got the altitude meter and that is going to be governing that 2 meter depth you want it at um, below. That will be uh, reading that out. This also has tilt control so a couple of the rudders back here are also on a tilt sensor and run through a function block and so they'll be stabilized so the steering can be perfectly stable. But uh, yeah that's really all it is to the body of it and uh, well, let's take a look at the microcontroller now. So here's the closing distance. That is how far before the pitch actually comes in and the torpedo starts to rise towards the target. We've then got the desired depth. So you can set this to whatever you like, but uh, I have it minus two because I think that's a nice torpedo depth. You can't really see it, but then it's uh, also in good range for this to come in. I've also got the options for the auto depth that is related to this. If you want it just to be a, uh, a dumb fire, I guess, you can turn that off and that just bypasses this PID. Uh, you can use these settings if you like on your own. Uh, for the pitch, I am only using a couple of fin rudders here. So there's two fin rudders with those settings on an altitude meter. You should be able to recreate this uh, yourself. I've also got Sonar FOV. That is just a constant number. I've just built it into the microcontroller for ease. But uh, yeah. So in here, it's not a huge, massive, you know, fill up the entire grid kind of microcontroller. But uh, there's a few things going on that we should take a look at. 
So let's start with pretty much the most simple part and that is going to be if the torpedo is launched from the hard point then the throttle is going to go through a switch box to the motors and that is just going to be desired throttle otherwise it's nothing. Here is just a bunch of properties involving the depth hold and the PID so if you've got the auto depth on it will activate the PID that controls the auto depth and just the different values for that. Going into the advanced one allows me to basically calibrate it from just a selector which was very easy. And then we also have the depth from the altitude meter and your desired depth going into the set point and process. Here with the target distance we can actually tell the system to start homing in and going up from what the PID is giving out. So we've got the target distance and if that is less than our closing threshold which we were talking about a minute ago then we're going to have the switch box turn on and enable our vertical elevation here. I'll go into this in a minute, but uh, we've also got this coming in and this is going to be target found. So this will actually not engage unless a target is present. I was having this problem where I was calibrating my PID and because it didn't have a target or the target was always in sight when I was testing, it was basically bypassing this. I was like, why isn't it, why isn't it stabilizing? But uh, yeah, that just allows it to move at that two meter depth until it finds a target. So for the pitch and yaw, probably what you're most interested about, um, it's a very simple process. All we have to do, uh, this is the exact same for pitch and yaw, but I'll just come down, do it on yaw because it's a little easier to see here. So we've got the horizontal elevation from the sonar and horizontal, by the way, is going to be this one right here. This is actually the vertical sonar because they work on elevation instead of azimuth basically that means they work on up and down instead of left and right so this being sideways basically means the elevation is the left and right of the torpedo again if you want to hear more about that and an in-depth tutorial then go ahead and check out the radar tutorial that i'll have in the cards or down below and you can learn all about that but this basically goes through a function and ignoring the minus there it's basically being multiplied by 10. I just have it on minus because when it was coming out, it was going in the opposite direction to the target. So I've simply minus that. That depends on which way your fin rudders are placed. Um, you could also just ro rotate them instead of putting in the minus, but uh, you can do what you like on that. And that simply goes straight out to the yaw. With the pitch again, it comes into the switch box and that goes through that whole cycle that I just mentioned. So, we've got an enemy on the horizon. Let's launch this. We'll try and follow it. And uh, very fast. And the range is pretty much endless until it runs out of battery on the hard point. But, uh, yeah. Let's see. Direct middle impact right there into the hole. Yeah, wow. That's going to cause water to come in there for sure. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you want to see more weapons DLC content, then do hit that like button and uh, drop a sub for me. And uh, yeah, I'll have some more videos out. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll catch you in the next one.